Yo, Pressure Gang, now look, bro. I had just got done reacting to the Evil Twins EP with Nasanova and A. Huncho. So it gave me a little idea. Let's stay on the topic of, you know, the E word. Evil. Yeah, that, that word. And we're going to look at some evil ass kids. Because I got to know what these. What From twisted motives to unimaginable to. violence, this video of the most evil kids in the world uncovers the horrifying crimes committed by children who were capable of unspeakable acts. Prepare yourself for a shocking journey this. as we delve into it's the disturbing 15, stories so. of 15 young perpetrators examining the depths of their depravity and how their actions leave you questioning the very nature of evil. Stop it when it gets Jasmine like seven Richardson. Or eight. Or it might in the quiet the town thing. of Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, a gruesome and shocking crime took place that would forever haunt the community. It was April 23, 2006, when the lives of the Stay Richardson family were brutally cut short in their own home. Mark Richardson, a 42-year-old father, Deborah Richardson, a 48-year-old mother, and their 8-year-old son, Tyler Jacob, fell Heights. victim to a horrifying act of violence that would send shockwaves through the nation. The scene was one of unimaginable horror, as the couple had been brutally stabbed to death in the base and their young son found dead upstairs. Oh the absence God. of their 12-year-old daughter, Jasmine Richardson, added to the confusion and fear. Bro, 12 years old. What I don't get is, what possesses some kids to do some shit like this, bro? Like, real talk, bro. You're 12 years old. What are you thinking about killing your family for? Like, that's some shit that's going to live with you for the rest of your life, bro. And you might not you might not have no remorse as a child when you do that shit, but when you grow up, nigga, you're going to be thinking to yourself like, "My nigga, what the fuck did I just do? Well, what the fuck did I do?" Or if you don't think like that, then nigga, you wasn't meant to be born in the first place. For a brief moment, there was a glimmer of hope that she had somehow escaped the violence. However, that hope was shattered when it was revealed that Jasmine was not a victim, but a perpetrator in this heinous crime. It wasn't until the following day that Jasmine Richardson was apprehended, but not in Medicine Hat. She was found in the community of Leda, Saskatchewan, approximately 130 kilometers away from her hometown. And she wasn't alone. With her was her 23-year-old boyfriend, Jeremy Allen. Alan Steinke. Huh? Hold up, bro. Am I, am I hearing this right? They said she was 12, right? Tyler Jacob fell victim to a horrifying act of violence that would send shockwaves through the nation. The scene was one of unimaginable horror, as the couple had been brutally stabbed to death in the basement and their young son found dead upstairs. The absence of their 12-year-old daughter, Jasmine... My nigga. I don't even know if I want to react to this. I ain't even gonna lie. You telling me a 12 year old had a 23 year old boyfriend? Sick ass motherfucking nigga and sick ass bitch. Richardson, Saskatchewan, nating the significant Jackson May, your old boyfriend, Jeremy Allen Steinke, who would later adopt the name Jackson May. As the investigation unfolded, the motive behind the Richardson family murders became clear. Jasmine's parents had grounded her for her relationship with Steinke, citing the significant age difference as a cause for concern. The couple also had a disturbing relationship with Steinke, claiming he was a 300-year-old werewolf and even wore a vial of blood around so his you neck, kill a macabre him. symbol. He had to obsession. be the one in to the put days that shit in her the head, murders, bro. The couple's behavior grew in increasingly disturbing. They watched the film Natural Born Killers, a violent movie about a young couple who embark on a killing spree. On July 9th, 2007, Richardson, who had turned 13. Bro, don't do this, bro. I hate, I hate when they try to do this. Like, they, motherfuckers say they play the, uh, play the violent game or watch a violent movie. Nigga, niggas watch violent movies and play violent games all the time, bro. That, that's not going to make somebody go out there and kill their whole fucking family, bro. Dean, by then, was found guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, making her the youngest person ever convicted of multiple first-degree murder counts in Canada. Despite her age, Richardson was sentenced to the maximum allowed under the law for someone her age, 10 years imprisonment. In November two. I'm sorry, I'm we keep pausing. Steinke was tried and found <laughs> guilty by a jury on three what counts of first-degree murder for the killings of the three Richardson victims. Ten years on for killing your whole family. Chevy Equinox EV starting at thirty-four nine ninety-five. Go EV bro. without changing a thing. Life. Chevrolet. We built a seven-figure business as a two-person agency, and I wish you know what you're doing. Honey book when we 
December 15, 2008, Steinke was sentenced to three life sentences, one for each first-degree murder count. The sentences were to be served concurrently, meaning that he would be eligible for parole after serving 25 years. Lyle what? Tate Born on January 30, Boy. 1987, in Broward County, Florida, Lionel Tate holds the infamous distinction of being the youngest American citizen ever sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. It was what a seemingly do? ordinary day on July 28, 1999, Most in Broward like County, mind. Florida. Lionel Tate, a 13-year-old boy, was left alone with Tiffany Eunuch, who his mother, Kathleen Grosset Tate, was babysitting. Little did anyone oh, know that this God. day would mark the beginning of a nightmare. As the children played downstairs, Tate's mother called out to them, urging them to keep the noise down. Unbeknownst to her, a sinister plan was already in motion. Approximately 45 minutes later, Tate delivered the horrifying news to his mother that Tiffany was no longer breathing. What awaited Kathleen upstairs was a sight that would haunt her for the rest of her days. Tiffany's small body was covered in bruises, her legs, feet, and neck bearing the marks of a brutal assault. The force used on her was so severe that it was likened to the impact of a speeding car, but the physical injuries were just the beginning of the horrors Tiffany had endured. Right. Alongside the bruises, Tiffany suffered a fractured skull, a lacerated liver, a fractured rib, and a swollen brain. Tate claimed he was just showing her some wrestling moves in what was supposedly child's play. However, her oh, injuries bro. were described as similar to those she would have sustained by falling from a three-story building. Tate was immediately, and despite being just a kid, he was tried as an adult. Under Florida statutes, Tate was convicted of first-degree murder, even without evidence of intent to kill or injure. All that was required was the knowledge that Tate knowingly abused another child who died. All right, so to Help me grasp the situation, bro. This nigga, who, who they said was 13, right? He does this dumbass shit and, uh, and ends this little girl. He gets life. But the female, and I'm sorry to bring race into it, but the white female, who was just only a year younger than him, kills three family members and only gets 10 years stop it bro like right as a result execute lionel tate in the state of it, florida I, in the I juvenile don't get court it, system i will never get meant it that lionel was Justice facing system is six just, to nine months know, in bro. juvenile detention that's one month for every year of this little girl's life and in my estimation, that was not an appropriate sentence. And that was not justice for this little girl. This controversial rule allowed Tate to be sentenced to life in prison without the prosecution having to prove Niggas his intent the same thing or even his realization of the consequences. Amajit Sada. In the dark annals of crime, some stories defy comprehension and shake us to our core. One such story is that of Amajit Sada, the world's youngest serial killer. Born in the village of Mushahar in Bihar, India, Amajit's name is synonymous with unimaginable evil. From an early age, Amajit displayed a solitary nature, often preferring to spend his time alone. It was during a visit from Amajit's aunt, who had recently found a job in the city, that the first signs of Amajit's sinister nature emerged. His aunt, unable to care for her own child while she settled into her new job, asked Amarjeet's family to look after the baby. With his mother needing to go to the local market, Amarjeet was left in charge of his cousin and his younger sister. It was during this time that Amarjeet's true nature began to reveal itself. He started by pinching and slapping the baby, finding amusement in her cries. But as the baby's cries escalated, so did Amarjeet's actions. For reasons unknown, he decided to raise the bar and put his hands around the baby's throat, depriving her of breath until she did. When Amarjeet's parents later discovered what he had done, they decided to keep the incident a secret instead of involving the authorities. Tragically, what? this would not be the end of Amajit's dark Why? journey. His next victim would be his own eight-month-old sister. As his parents slept, Amajit strangled his innocent sibling, snuffing out her life without remorse. Yeah, it wasn't until 2007 that Amajit's crimes would finally come to light. His final alleged victim was a six-month-old baby girl named Kushbu. The Maybe baby's mother, a neighbor, had left her daughter sleeping at a local primary school. When she returned, she was met with a mother's worst nightmare. Her baby was missing. However, under mounting pressure and scrutiny, Amajit's parents eventually videos, allowed bro? their son to confess to the unimaginable. Amajit admitted to strangling Kushbu, hitting her with a brick, and burying her in a shallow grave. Jesus Astonishingly, Christ. he was able to lead the police to the exact spot where he had hidden her lifeless body. The truth of Amajit's crimes was finally exposed, sending shockwaves through the community and the nation as a whole. Instead of facing a traditional trial, Amajit was placed in a remand 
Grand Home, where he would receive the necessary care and treatment until he turned 18. It was determined that he suffered from conduct disorders, a psychiatric condition characterized by a persistent pattern of violating the rights of others and disregarding societal norms. In 2016, upon turning 18, Amarjeet was released from the Remand home. The decision to release him was met with mixed reactions from the public. So Some believed again, huh? that he had served his time and should be given a chance at redemption, while others feared that he posed a continued threat to society. The current whereabouts of Amarjeet Sada remain unknown. It is believed that he was given a new identity to protect him from potential then harm and to allow him to start afresh. However, the question of whether someone with such a dark past can truly be rehabilitated lingers in the minds of many. Mary Bell. In 1960... I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Well, it's, it's like on a fourth one now. Yeah, we're gonna get to seven and we're gonna... We're gonna we're At the gonna tender age of ten, bro. Mary this, Bell this committed dark, a series man. of unimaginable crimes that would forever brand her as the most evil kid in the world. Strangling her victims with a cold and calculated demeanor, she left behind haunting confession notes that sent shockwaves through her community. The details of her crimes haunting confession notes that sent... What this say? This is crazy, bro. Shockwaves through her community. The details of her crimes are so horrifying that they defy belief. Born on May 26, 1957, in Newcastle, England, Mary Bell's early years were marked by neglect, abuse, and a profound lack of love and stability. As Mary grew older, her life took a dark turn. She became increasingly withdrawn, manipulative, and prone to violent outbursts. It is believed that her troubled upbringing, marked by neglect and abuse, played a significant role in shaping her disturbed psyche. As Mary Bell entered her preteen years, her growing obsession with death became increasingly apparent. On May 25, 1968, the day before her 11th birthday, Mary Bell committed her first murder. She lured four-year-old Martin Brown into an abandoned house in Scotswood, England, where she proceeded to strangle him to death. Mary left the scene and returned with her friend Norma Bell, no relation, only to discover that two local boys had stumbled upon the lifeless body. The police were called, and the investigation into Martin's death began. The police were in initially mystified by Martin's death. Besides a small amount of blood and saliva on his face, there were no... What, what I'm getting from here is that most of these, most of these kids, bro, are killing kids younger than them. I don't know how the fuck the first girl was able to kill both of her parents. I don't... I, bro... I don't know, man. I don't, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But uh, Apparent bro. signs of violence. An empty bottle of painkillers near the body led them to believe that Martin's death was an accident, the result of an overdose. Shortly after this disturbing encounter, Mary and Norma broke into a nursery school and vandalized it with notes taking responsibility for Martin Brown's death. On July 31st, 1968, Mary Bell and her friend Norma embarked on their most horrifying act yet. They lured three-year-old Brian Howe to a secluded area where Mary proceeded to strangle him to death. But the horror did didn't end there. In a display of unimaginable cruelty, Mary mutilated Brian's body with a pair of scissors. She oh scratched his thighs and butchered his genitals, leaving behind a scene of unspeakable horror. The coroner's oh report also revealed a disturbing detail. As Brian's blood had cooled, new marks appeared on his chest. Someone had used a razor blade to scratch the letter M onto his torso, a chilling oh signature left by Mary Bell. Norma, perhaps overwhelmed by guilt, began cooperating with the police and implicated Mary in the crimes. She was eventually sentenced to be imprisoned at Her Majesty's pleasure, a British legal term that denotes an indeterminate sentence. Today, Mary Bell remains protected by the British government, living in anonymity under a new identity. Christian Fernandez. What? Christian Fernandez was just 12 years old when he killed his two-year-old half-brother. According to Hotler, died from head injuries when Fernandez slammed him into a bookshelf in their apartment. The story begins with a seemingly ordinary family living in a modest home on Alden Road. David Galarraga, a sweet and innocent toddler, was the apple of his mother's man, eye. Bro, but behind is, closed doors, a sinister secret tough, was brewing. Man. In January of 2011, this David's leg was mysteriously to. broken. His mother, Bianala Susana, claimed it was just a jungle gym accident. However, this would be the first sign of the darkness that was about to consume their lives. Yeah, then, right. on that... I ain't gonna lie. 
aside from the first the first one, nigga, it starts with the parents, bro. The first kid they was talking about. The parents were actually trying to do something about their child, whatever situation it was in. The other, I can't say it. It starts with the fucking parents, my nigga. Fateful day in March, everything changed. Bianella made a frantic call to the police, claiming that David had fallen at their home. But the truth was far more sinister. When the authorities arrived at the hospital, they were met with a sight that would haunt them forever. David lay motionless, his tiny body battered and broken. His skull was fractured, his brain bleeding, and his eyes and nose bruised. Medical experts would later estimate that his head and face had been struck more than a dozen times. It was a level of brutality Jesus. that defied comprehension. As the investigation unfolded, the shocking truth of about his elder half-brother Christian Fernandez began to emerge. While the story of what exactly happened is unclear, Christian like, admitted that he had become violent towards the toddler and roughly shoved him into a bookshelf too. Brother. In fact, Christian had been the one to break the toddler's leg just a few months Why before would the you gruesome do some murder. Shit like that? He was sitting like this, and then how did you do his legs so we can understand happened? Did you hear a snap or something? Did you hear a pop? Well, sorry. However, what was more disturbing was the fact Fucking that Bianca, bitch. upon arriving home, waited for more than four hours before seeking medical attention for her son. At just 12 years old, Christian was charged as an adult with first-degree murder and aggravated child abuse. After months of legal battles and public outcry, a plea agreement was reached. Fernandez, now 14 Nigga, I'm years so old, fucking stood mad, before bro. Circuit Judge Mallory Cooper and pleaded guilty to manslaughter and aggravated battery. This conviction so made him the youngest person to be charged as an adult in the history of Jacksonville. This meant that he he would serve approximately seven years for the manslaughter charge. Kyle Allwood. A nine-year-old boy. Ah. Ah. Seven years? Seven years for killing your baby brother, huh? <laughs> Nigga, I sort of... Oh, boy. Mm, mm, mm. Boy accused of murder and I really don't want to say too much because Illinois courtroom on Monday. Kyle Allwood is charged with five counts of first degree murder and multiple counts what? of arson. Next, we uncover the horrifying revolving around a young boy named Kyle Allwood. Lost Indiana Medicaid? This is the last one, bro, right here, bro. Plan. What about a plan that covers doctor This is the last one right here, bro who, at the tender age of nine, committed an act so heinous that it earned him the title of the most evil kid in the world. On the night of April 6, 2019, a quiet neighborhood in Goodfield, Illinois, about. was about like, to become shit. the backdrop for a horrifying tragedy. At around 11 p.m., a fire broke out in the central area of Peoria, near the village of Goodfield. The flames quickly engulfed a mobile home, turning it into a blazing inferno. Within minutes, firefighters arrived at the scene, their sirens piercing through the night. As they battled the raging flames, they were unaware of the devastating loss that awaited them inside the charred structure. When the fire was finally extinguished, the grim reality became apparent. Five lives had been tragically cut short, their futures snuffed out in an instant. The victims uh. of this horrific incident were three young children, all under the age of three, Catherine Murray, a 69-year-old grandmother, and Jason Wall, a 34-year-old man. The news of this devastating loss uh. sent shockwaves through the community. Neighbors, friends, and family members were left reeling, struggling to comprehend the magnitude of the tragedy that had unfolded before their eyes. Amidst the chaos and grief, two individuals managed to survive the fire. Katrina Allwood, aged 27, and her son Kyle, the alleged perpetrator of this heinous act, escaped the flames that consumed their home. Six months after the devastating fire, the unimaginable truth came to light. Kyle Allwood, the young boy who had managed to escape the flames, was taken into custody and charged with a series of grave offenses. The weight Whoa, of the bitch. accusations against him was staggering. I'm Kyle, sorry, at just nine years old, found himself facing five counts of first-degree murder, two counts fuck, of arson, nigga. and one count of aggravated arson. The severity of these charges sent shockwaves through the community and the nation at large. As the case moved forward, the local prosecutor defended his decision to file murder charges against Kyle. He maintained that justice needed to be served, but also acknowledged that due to the boy's young age, he was only expected to face probation if convicted robert thompson and john venables nah I don't, we calling it there but if y'all if y'all want me to do a part two uh, I, I might do a part two nigga this shit this shit dark bro this shit dark bro shit dark bro 
Road to 10K, man. Hit that sub button. Hit that like button. Let me know right soon in the future, man. Make sure y'all keep applying pressure to them diamonds, Sean, nigga. I'm out, dog.